with every patch there has been one build that stands out over the others, the so-called meta build. In update 1.3 this was the Tanktician, in 1.4 and 1.5 this was the Alpha Bridge build. Update 1.6 greatly improved skill power and the Reclaimer gear set, and it might be one of the next big builds. So that's what we'll focus on today. Before we start, we wanted to mention that most of the information provided in this video comes from the public test server for update 1.6. This means that changes could and probably will be made. Of course, achieving the perfect build is near impossible, we know that too, but we do it like this to let you see what you want to strive for. With all of that out of the way, let's have a look at our take on the new Reclaimer Healer build. As mentioned earlier in the video, the skill power has now been improved. The point of heavily diminishing returns is now capped at 450k instead of 250k, meaning that the skill power scaling is now better than ever, and this can be seen in our build. Let's start with the gear, since this is the core part of the build. Two gear slots will contain high end gear, and four gear slots will contain the reclaimer gear set. For the chest piece, we'll select any high end chest piece with a rapid talent which decreases the cooldown on all healing oriented skills by 15%. You could replace this with a high end chest piece with a vigorous talent to overheal yourself and make the most of the talent on the backpack. The backpack we have equipped is another high end with a specialized talent. It adds 200% of your firearms and stamina to skill power. Alternatively, you could go for inventive, but we chose specialized because it doesn't depend on you being at full health. The mask, knee pads, gloves and holster contain the reclaimer gear set. The two piece gear set bonus increases the support station range by 30%, the three piece bonus increases the duration by 50% and the four piece activates all mods on the support station. Instead of going over each gear piece, we'll go over the preferred statistics for all of them and all the details will be shown on screen. The main stat that you want to choose is electronics on all of the gear. This sounds odd at first, but we'll explain when you get to the major attributes. Of course, the holster contains three of the main stats, so that one is an exception. The armor on each gear piece should be of course the highest possible, that goes without saying. And the major attributes play a different role. Armor has been removed and is replaced with health, which is always the primary major attribute you want to roll. The reason you don't want to roll skill power on here is because when calculated correctly, health increases your stamina by more than double the amount than skill power does for skill power. For more information you can check out Marco Style's video, he explained it there very well. So check it out if you want to know more about that. The other major attributes are a combination of critical hit chance to benefit most of the caduceus weapon talent, skill haste to decrease the cooldowns on your healing skills and assault rifle damage to boost the caduceus even more. Of course there are loads of other bonuses available to select so it depends on your personal preference and dedication to the healer build. The minor attributes also depend on personal preference but we mostly went for increased ammo capacity, burn resistance and blind death resistance. The gear mods mainly revolve around electronics to unlock the skill power even more. Next to that the bonuses that you want are similar to the major and minor attributes of the gear. Performance mods that you can choose for the support station are support station duration, range and healing speed. We're going for the latter since both the duration and range are good and already get a boost through the Reclaimer 2 and 3 piece. But alternatively uh, we would recommend range to get a, a huge area of effect. Uh, so that leaves us with 4 support station healing speed mods on the backpack, knee pads and holster. The weapons, exotic weapons in particular, have been reworked as well. The exotic weapons previously known as the named weapons now have two random and one unique weapon talent instead of three fixed weapon talents. The selected primary weapon is the Caduceus, since its unique weapon talent synergizes very well with this build. Its weapon talent, Caduceus, heals you and your squad mates for 1% of your skill power for every critical hit. And it can only heal each player every fifth of a second. 
The two random weapon talents we recommend are Adept and Competent, which synergize well with the Caduceus. They work very well with any skill driven build, and the stat requirements aren't that high, since you won't be specking into firearms and stamina that much. These talents do not only apply when killing an enemy, but also apply when you take down skills. This combines quite well with one of the talents that we recommend later on in the video. Alternatively, you could select Talented, Fierce, Vicious or even Destructive on the weapon, since these weapon talents would fit the Caduceus and the healer build as well. The weapon mods mostly revolve around headshot damage and critical hit chance. The selected optic is the VX1 scope, in the magazine slot equip the extended magazine, the underbarrel slot contains the small grip, and the final modification, the muzzle, is equipped with the Omega Rifle Suppressor. The reasons we selected headshot damage is because they synergize as well with the already decent assault rifle headshot damage at 75%, and the critical hit chance goes well with the Caduceus weapon talent. And for a third stat roll, you can either go with accuracy or, as we did, stability. We didn't go for accuracy since the Caduceus has a good base accuracy at 49%. And if you want to know more about the whole reasoning behind the recommended weapon mods, we want to refer you to Marco Styles' Assault Rifle Modding Guide. And for more information on the Caduceus, we refer you to our Caduceus Weapon Guide. The secondary weapon that is equipped is the Tenebri. Its unique weapon talent synergizes well with the skill power builds. Lights out, as it's called, resets skill cooldowns for you and your nearby group members when destroying an enemy weak point. This is kind of situational, but definitely useful in PvE. Combine this with Ferocious and Competent to benefit optimally from the unique weapon talent. The weapon mods are exactly similar to those of the Caduceus. The sidearm you select is up to you. We chose the Golden Rhino since it's a very powerful sidearm. Its unique talent, called Golden Rhino, increases stagger by 200%, which might come in handy to disable any rushing enemy. Sadly, it's the only talent it has. It does have two mod slots, the Optic and the Underbarrel. For the Optic, equip the Reflex sight, and the selected Underbarrel is the small laser pointer. Now, let's get into the skills since this build obviously focuses on healing and for that you need skills. The build mainly focuses on the support station. It heals you and your allies and can be used to manually revive. As stated, the Reclaimer 4 piece activates all three of the support station mods, Life Support, Immunizer and Ammo Cache. Due to the Reclaimer 2 piece bonus, the affected area is increased by 30% meaning it is capable of having a range of 9.75 meters. If you decide to equip support station range mod, you can boost this up to 12 meters. The secondary skill is the first aid with the overdose. This mod has the highest base heal at a slower cooldown. Alternatively, you could go for defibrillator to have a less base heal, but a faster skill cooldown, or go with the booster shot to increase damage of your allies and yourself but once again with a lower base heal. And the selected signature skill is of course the recovery link, which is ideal for keeping your team alive in those critical situations. The talents are more often than not forgotten, but play a bigger role than you think. We selected triage, critical save, combat medic and death by proxy. Triage reduces skill cooldowns for the entire squad by 15% when healing a squad member with a skill. This is probably the most important talent for this build, decreasing the skill cooldown that much more. Critical save increases your damage resistance by 20% for 10 seconds when using a med kit during low health, which could mean the difference between life and death, you never know. Combat medic heals your squad members within a 20 meter radius by 40% when using a med kit, which practically gives you a 4 squad healing skill. An additional bonus is that it also heals your support station. Small bonus, but still a bonus. And finally, Death by Proxy increases your skill power by 20% for 30 seconds when destroying an enemy's deployed skill. This shouldn't be that hard since a lot of players and NPCs run the turret, seeker mine or even the support station. 
Now, let's talk strategy. Of course, the healer is a support build, meaning that you shouldn't tank and you don't have the highest damage per second. You support those in your squad that take on these rules. For you to optimally make use of this build, it requires your squad mates to run with the pulse. This way it increases your critical hit chance, so you can benefit optimally from the Caduceus weapon talent. Secondly, you want your squad mates to run with a high-end chest piece with Virus on it. The reason for this is because Virus applies only to the player that wears it, so if you wear Virus, your skill only overheals you and not your squad mates. Before heading into battle, make sure to deploy the support station in a safe space so the enemies don't destroy it. Often you can place it in tires of vehicles or in places that people can't reach. When in battle, the high skill power in combination with the support station should do most of the work for you. But next to that, you can heal your team and yourself with the first aid as well. Also make sure to use the soda consumable to decrease cooldowns by 30% or if your skill haste is very high already since it's kept at 50% you can go with the canned food for 40% increased health generation. One thing to keep in mind is that now that the reclaimer has changed you don't have infinite consumables anymore. The combination of the rapid gear talent, soda consumable and triage talent decreases the skill cooldown for your first aid by quite a lot. If done correctly the skill cooldown can go down to a 6 second cooldown but this is very very hard because you have to time everything right. For triage to work optimally you want your squad mates to enter the first aid's affected area with a few seconds in between. This way it can proc three times instead of when you heal all of your squad mates at once. And that concludes the build. Before we head into the outro we want to mention that we left pictures in the description. They contain the gear, weapons, skills and talents that we recommended in this video so you can download those uh, so you can check them out without having to go back to this video. We hope you now have an idea on how to build your healer or medic build. Of course this is one way to create a healer but you can always swap out some gear, weapons, weapon talents, weapons mods, skills, skills mods and even talents. The video was inspired by our fellow Dutchie Marco Style. He made a reclaimer build a video a while ago, so a lot of credit goes out to him. Check him out. We've linked him down in the description, as well as all the other videos we mentioned. He also made a new one for 1.6 with the Tactician's Authority that mainly focuses on the first aid. Check that out as well. And we want to thank you for watching. Ratings, good or bad, help us out a lot. Please give us some feedback on what we did well and what we can do better. All of the information that's used in this video is linked in the description. Any questions that you have can be asked in the comment section and we'll make sure to answer them. Have a nice day!